Welcome. Hallelujah. What a joy and delight. What a joy and delight. Welcome. Hallelujah. I'm sure you want to be part of the kingdom. We're coming straight to proclaim Psalm 58. We commence with a prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, open our eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. Father, we prepare the garden of our hearts that it will be with the good soil and that the birds of the air will not come to eat of this word and that it will be taken away because of lack of understanding. So we pray, open our eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. As I proclaim this word, let it go forth with power and authority even as you proclaim it on this time in Jesus' name. It's 3.36 in the a.m. on Sunday the 30th of June and I come to proclaim psalm 58 we bless the name of the lord for this incredible assignment that the lord put in our hands about uh four years now and this is the eighth season that the lord has enabled us and this particular session we want to energize our faith by the grace of god we will energize our faith we will see the faithfulness of god as we hear the word of god psalm 58 for the director of music to the tune of Do Not Destroy, of David, a mictam. Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge uprightly among men? No. In your heart you devise injustice, and your hands meet out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. Psalm 58 as even before I go further, is displaying the current condition of the earth in every corner of the universe at this 26th week of the year, this being the last day of it, and we commence the 27th week, is that it's a time that we are seeing across the nations in every location. We see a portrayal of this scripture coming to pass. So I pray that you, you listen with your eyes and your ears at the same time. And also we are going to have some prayers as we continue. So I will proclaim it. I'm proclaiming from the NIV version 1984. You can use your Bible. You can follow along. Let me give you a moment to get it as I take a cup. Hallelujah. For the director of music the tune of Do Not Destroy of David Amictam. 1. Do you rulers speak justly? Do you judge uprightly among men? No, in your heart you devise injustice, and your hands meet out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray, from the womb they are wayward and speak lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake. Like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears. That will not heed to the tune of the charmer. However skillful the enchanter may be. Break their teeth. Break the teeth in their mouths, O Lord. Tear out, O Lord the fangs of the lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away when they draw the bow. Let their arrows be blunted like a slug melting away as it moves along like a stillborn child. May they see not the sun. May they not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they are green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they battle, when they bath their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then men will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Psalm 58. Time has reached fullness and i come to speak to energize your faith 
So let's go on to Proverbs 15, Revelation 15, and then we shall get to the meat of the message. And that will be a good thing. I trust that you are also following along and the Lord is helping you to get a strategy to daily, daily intake the word of God. In the seasons of 150 days of Psalms, we have, uh, I think it was season 4, where we were taking in 8 chapters of the Bible every single day. And those videos are there on the YouTube. So if you want to listen, it is right there. You can be able to go to the YouTube of Malcolm David on YouTube or just search using the hashtag 150 days of Psalms. And it will bring you all the videos from when we began season 1, both on Facebook and on the YouTube. So we come to Proverbs 15. Hallelujah. What a joy. Wisdom is a beautiful thing. Psalm, uh, Proverbs 15. It says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but the mouth of the fool gushes out folly. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. A fool spans his father's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. The house of the righteous contains great treasure, but the income of the wicked brings them trouble. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the heart of fools. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Stern discipline awaits those who leave the path. He who hates correction will die. Death and destruction lie open before the Lord. How much more the hearts of men. <laughs> Proverbs 12, 15, 12. A mocker resents correction. He will not consult the wise. A happy heart makes the face <laughs> cheerful but heartache crushes the spirit let me mention something here when you have a sick person in hospital you'd rather not visit them if at all you are going to visit them with a, a long face or a face that shows them oh you are so sick you are so sick we are so sad when you go to meet a person who is unwell carry with you a happy heart if you carry a happy heart it is good medicine to his bones even if the person may not be able to understand what you're saying or what you're doing but when you carry a happy heart it makes the face cheerful not just your face even other people when you have a happy heart you make it makes the face not only yours but the face is cheerful this is a good proverb to always remember always remember to Check on your countenance. What and how does your countenance reflect on the rest of the people? Because this wisdom is very important and it will energize your faith. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. All the days of the oppressed are wretched. But the cheerful heart has a continual feast. This is where you ought to also guard your mind. You don't just allow everything into your mind. Don't allow everything that brings, you know, uh, sadness and destruction and all these things. If at all you do not watch horror movies, do not go looking at clips that have a graphic a discretion um, notice before you watch them. Because if you go to watch them, it will be the same as watching a horror movie. And if you do that, it might trigger some of the things from your past and cause you to, chew, to lose your cheerful heart. Hmm. Better a lie with the fear of the Lord. Better a little, sorry. Better a little with the fear of the Lord. Verse 16. Than great wealth with turmoil. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love 
than a fattened calf with hatred. This is <laughs> one of the proverbs that was always guiding me as a young man, as I was growing, and I would go to places and I would see how people behave when they have made choice food. And, you know, you notice there's no love in this place. So I would already have harvested my, my appetite not to apply in that matter so that I'll not feel bad. I can know these people are, you know, like there's one person who was uh, sending a message. I think it was, it was just a joke he was thinking about. So he said that he had visited someone and while he was there uh, holding the friend's phone, the friend's phone rang, uh, got a message, and it was the mom saying, tell your friend to go. We want to eat. <laughs> so better a meal of vegetables better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fattened calf where there is hatred proverbs 15 and verse 17 proverbs 15 and verse 18 a hot tempered man stirs up dissension but a patient man comes a quarrel the way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns but the path of the upright is a highway proverbs 15:20 a wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly delights a man who lacks judgment. But a man of understanding keeps a straight course. So there are things that when we are doing, we must be careful to engage wisdom. Because folly delights a man who lacks judgment. So if there is no judgment, then you're going to have foolishness flowing from you. And a man of understanding keeps a straight course. Again, I bring back Matthew 13, 19, that says, When a man hears the message of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and steals it, and the man looks like the seed that fell along the road. So folly delights a man who lacks judgment. Proverbs 15.21 But a man of understanding keeps a straight course. Beloved, becoming a student of wisdom and becoming an intercessor who always prays for wisdom is one of the most amazing, remarkable things you can do because the Lord delights in answering prayer. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, is our helper, he delights to fill every heart that is willing to accommodate the Holy Spirit the same way a room may want to accommodate light as long as the bulb is turned on. So the Holy Spirit is not a mystery. It is not something, the Holy Spirit is not a, is not force. It is not a force. It is not a person. It is not something carried by pastors who push people and they fall down. That is the misconception of who the Holy Spirit is. God the Holy Spirit does not possess people. The difference between demons and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not possess people. The Holy Spirit dwells and he is attracted by righteousness and holiness. He loves that. Where there is where there is um, where there is no hatred because you can never fight for anything using hate if you use hate then you automatically are on satan's side and he has more hate than anyone on earth he has been yani he hates humanity with perfect hatred anyone who tries to become a friend of the devil loses at the end of it all you check check all the records read all the stories Read even the most, you know, the most, um, the most wealthy people of the earth who were entered into covenants with Satan thinking that he would be their friend. Eventually, he would lie to them and get them killed. Same thing. They would even kill themselves. Like King Saul in the Bible, the people rejected God as their king. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 8, they rejected. They say, we don't want, we want a king over us. And then God told Samuel, this is what the king will do. 
He will take your main servants. He will take your children and make them main servants and maid servants. He will do these things. From that time up to now, all the world economies of the earth and all the governments of the earth follow this principle of rejecting God and choosing people, including even our nation Kenya. In 2010, we changed the constitution and we put a clause that says the sovereign the power the sovereign power of Kenya belongs to the people now that one in it interpretation it means the national anthem where we sing o oh god of all creation is not uh, is not applying because now the power is with the people it's the people the people are the ones doing things the people so now when the people come and reach their end where do they go to more people of course the people cannot make it it's only through the name of the lord it's only through kenya belongs to the lord and the fullness thereof that is it it does not even if you bring whichever political party even if a church began a political party still it would not satisfy the people because why the sovereignty of any nation the lord is the one who is who owns the earth you understand in psalm 24 it says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof now i just want to energize your faith we're going to share this more maybe with the intercessors but for now let's continue reading the scripture proverbs 15 and verse 22 plans fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors, they succeed. <laughs> a man finds joy in giving an apt reply. And how good is a timely word. Hallelujah. The path of life, the path of life, Proverbs 15, 24. The path of life leads upward for the wise to keep him from going down to the grave. So wisdom gives you and sets you on a course of life the path of life leads upward for the wise to keep him from going down to the grave the lord tears down the proud man's house but he keeps the widow's boundaries intact the lord detests the thoughts of the wicked but those of the pure are pleasing to him hmm did you know your thoughts god can see your thoughts when you're seated in church and you're thinking, oh, the pastor is preaching too long. Or you're just thinking about some bread you left on the table. When can I finish the service and go and eat the bread with coffee? I mean, these are some things that go through the minds of Christians. When they are seated, oh, did I switch off the engine of the car? Did I switch on the lights? These are things that are going through your mind. Those are thoughts. Next week is cousin so-and-so's baby shower. What will I buy her? You're in church. Your thoughts. The Lord can see them. So, the greatest battle is in your mind. The battlefield of your mind. That you must be somewhere presently. You must be present in that place. When you are with your children, keep your phone away. Be with them. See them. Look at them. Look at their face. Talk to them. Because if the Lord can see the thoughts, it says what? The Lord detests the thought of the wicked, but those of the pure are pleasing to him. Could you imagine that there is a point in your life that you could be grouped as wicked and yet you're a Christian. Yet you say you're born again. But the Lord will look at the thoughts in your mind and they are detestable thoughts. So these are things that we need to be careful about. Guard. Guard your mind. Hallelujah. 15.27 he says, A greedy man brings trouble to his family, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Proverbs 15.29 The Lord is far from the wicked. But he hears the prayer of the righteous. A cheerful look brings joy <laughs> to the heart. And good news gives health to the bones. 
So again, I bring wisdom about your countenance. You have to be careful about your countenance. Remind yourself. There are some of you that <laughs> are very economical with the, with a smile. And you have a good one, but you don't smile. You just, you know, I, I don't know whether it's something to do with the, with the personality, but personality needs the Holy Spirit so that your personality is balanced. You energize your faith by applying the word of God. So this is a simple one to apply. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. And good news gives health to the bones. If at all something is not good news, I'll not talk about it. If at all something, yes, 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 yes. There is all these things that are happening. But you choose to speak the good news. It gives health to other people as well. But if you talk about depressing news every time, news, even the journalists, sometimes they need therapy. Because they are always recording and they are always, you know, talking about injustice and they are taking pictures of people dying and all these things. And they require to have an outlet. And truly, they have that within their programs. They actually go and they talk. They talk. Even most of them don't watch television. Most journalists don't watch television. Why? Because the news that goes out of there it does not bring health to the bones. It does not bring good news. So a cheerful look brings joy to the heart. And good news gives health to the bones. This is just Proverbs 15.30. Proverbs 15.31 and then we go up to 33 and we go into the book of Revelation. I can't wait to get into the meat of this, uh, of this, um, of this uh, broadcast. Energize your faith. I'm coming there shortly. So let's just go uh, with the word of God. He says, he who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. This is Proverbs 15, 31. He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise he who ignores discipline despises himself but whoever heeds correction gains understanding hmm proverbs 15:33 the fear of the lord teaches a man wisdom and humility comes before honor beloved this is proverbs 15 very deep very very guiding and it's the way to guard the way of the young person. The word of God says in the book of Psalm uh, 119 verse 9, How can a young man guard his way? It says by living according to the word of God. Every single day, look at the scripture and ask yourself, How can I apply this to my life? It says he who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. What areas of your life need rebuke? Do you have some indiscipline? Maybe you don't eat food the way you should. Maybe you overeat or you undereat. Or maybe you, you, know, you have an anger problem. You shout at people. You shout at your children. You shout at your employees. These are things that you allow this word to rebuke you. And from now on forth, you choose when you want to talk to people who are far from you, to avoid yourself from yelling, just go to where they are. It's much, much, much better when we become energized and apply and our life become like the, wonder, the, like the word of God. Like we are living the script of the word of God. It's, um, let me say it's, it's something that you must do. It's a work. It's a work. Because there are some times, you know, when people despise you and when people um, show you you don't matter, you have a mechanism to automatically defend yourself. And even you'll avoid those kind of people. But guess what Jesus told us to do? To pray for those people who despise us. To pray for those people who, uh, who are considering themselves our enemies. We are supposed to pray for them. We are supposed to do it. That is what we are supposed to do. There are prayers that Jesus told us to pray. One is we were told to pray for laborers. That there may be enough laborers in the, in the, in the field of the Lord. Another prayer we were asked to pray is to pray for our enemies. The Lord Jesus said categorically, pray for your enemies. And then another one, he said, pray that the, the day of the Lord does not come during winter. He says it, pray that this does not happen in winter. Everywhere that the Lord Jesus Christ says, pray, take careful 
attention. Now let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 15 and then we go to the meat of the word and wow, what a joy and delight to be able to do this and then we shall make a prayer even over Kenya and over the nations. There's a lot happening in the nations and God is helping us to understand one thing that will not be happening in heaven there will be no evangelism in heaven there is no evangelism in heaven there is no preaching so save your sermon for the earth in heaven there is no preaching there is no sun look at we will see there in the revelation book of revelation you'll see a city that does not need the sun does not need the light of the sun because the lamp is the light in the city oh my god i just love the book of revelation it's one of the most amazing books if it could rhyme i would like to write a song of the book of revelation and just sing it because it's one of those books that satan doesn't want you to read <laughs> He doesn't want you to read it. He tells you, no, 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 that one is not for you. The book of Revelation is confusing. Don't read it. In fact, there are people who have told me that uh, they don't read the book of Revelation because they don't understand when they read. But of course, if you don't understand, it is snatched, it is stolen. You can always make this prayer. Oh Lord, open my eyes. As I read this word, open my eyes. Give me insight. Give me revelation. Things that I have never seen before, Lord. Reveal the hidden manna. And grant me the Rema word out of this scripture. That as I read this Logos, as it comes forth, it will become flesh. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now that's a sample prayer you can make in your Bible study when you are reading different portions of scripture, when you read and pray, there is so much power. So it goes, I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire and standing beside the sea those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name they held harps given them by god and sang the song of moses the servant of god and the song of the lamb great and marvelous are your deeds lord god almighty just and true are your ways king of the ages who will not fear you, O Lord, verse 4, and bring glory to your name, for you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I looked, and in heaven the temple, that is, the tabernacle of the testimony, was opened. Out of the temple, came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sachets around their chest. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven bowls with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Revelation 15. One of the most shortest portions of Revelation. It has only eight verses. Beloved, I come full of joy and strength to glorify the name of the Lord and to magnify Him as we receive fresh energy for our faith. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. He leaves me not. He forsakes me not. Because the greater one dwells within me. Hallelujah. I can overcome every situation. The faith of God resides within me. And through it I have the victory that overcomes the world. 
I thank you, Father, that I have all these things. I believe it in my heart and I've released it with my mouth. So be it. It will surely come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, in Romans 10:9, the word of God tells us if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is how to energize your faith. If you are here watching, listening, you are not yet given your life to Jesus. You have not yet been, you have not chosen to, to you know, to 100% commit yourself to the Lord. Then you will discover that your faith is not energized. And you will discover that you are easily moved by occurrences around you. Remember, the scripture tells us in John 16.33, In this world, you will have many troubles, but be of good cheer, you overcame the world. Dear brothers and sisters around the world, time has reached fullness. It is time, it is time, it is time. For mercy and judgment. Dear beloved, we pray for the Lord's mercy to triumph over judgment. Because we do not pray even for our enemies to fall under the wrath of God. But if at peradventure you are mocking God, you think you can just mock God, <laughs> then you choose the side of judgment. That is not for Christians to do. In fact, we should not even threaten people with judgment. We should ask God for mercy. Every time we find ourselves in a situation where somebody is even blaspheming, there are people who blaspheme. They say, where is that God? Let him come and strike me now. And nothing seems to happen at that time. Instead of you praying and saying, Watch our pig when ready, is there for you to pray, Lord, show your mercy. Show your mercy. Like as this is the prayer I'm making over nations, in the nation of Israel, uh, just this week, the young people, the law requires them that when they become of age, they should join the military and defend their nation. But this week, they went to the streets and said, I would rather go to jail than join the army. This is a revolt happening in Israel. The same time in Kenya, we have another kind of movement about the economic situation. In Bulgaria, the same, same situation. In every nation of the earth right now, the time has reached fullness. I want to mention that there's no lockdown that um, is as worse as a lockdown of not looking to God. Many have even departed from the faith. Because they saw someone do something wrong in the faith. Beloved, gossip is one of the greatest killers of the work of God. When people gossip about one another, their mouth is covered with falsehood immediately. And they cannot pray. Anyone that will gossip you, they cannot pray for you. And this is what happens especially when many people especially in congregations. You see that young man used to play the drums. Then last week someone saw him smoking marijuana. And instead of praying for that young man, they start talking about that young man. Is this how people should be taking drums, should be doing? And then they start discussing about it. And what happens after that? That person's faith is completely de-energized. To energize your faith, you must say the right words. You must have the right confession. You must have the right conviction. You must speak the right words. You must be alert and active because God is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1 and, and, 1 and verse 12. So every, every idle word spoken, every idle word spoken, will be held accountable. You will be held accountable for it. Any word. So, stay out. You know, even it says, uh, you know, even a fool is considered wise when they remain silent about something. You don't have to be part of all conversations. There are some conversations, the right answer for them is silence. Is silence. The church of Jesus Christ can never be silenced. But there are some 
things that are happen that happen on the earth that the right answer for the church is to be silent especially if they are part and parcel of the whole confusion if you open your mouth you reveal your folly instantly so the proverb says that he who watches over his tongue watches over his life it is better to redeem ourselves and to cry to the lord all nations of the earth return to the lord remain active and alert watch over your word and perform it the same way god does it in jeremiah 1 12 he says i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it hallelujah hallelujah again in ezekiel 12 25 it says for i am the lord i will speak and the word that i speak shall be performed god values his word so much do you value your word do you god help us show us mercy help us lord to be like our father who keeps his word and who watches over it a lot that he may perform it for i am the lord i will speak and the word i speak shall be performed i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it that is exactly how our father is may you receive an energy energization of your faith that indeed you speak the right words energize your faith for your mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to your lips even I love what it says in the book of uh, Proverbs, I uh, know, Psalm 16. It says, let me just read because I know you may not have read it. <laughs> there are sometimes I will just be giving you a chapter so that you go and dig or you talk to Uncle Google who will help you to find it. So there is um, Proverbs, Psalms uh, 16. So it says, verse, um, verse 4. It says, the sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. There are some names that they will never and they should never be found on your lips. One of those, those things is gossip. Kill gossip in its... Yani, destroy gossip completely destroy it if at all somebody is not able to talk to you when the other person is there then there's going to be problem because a gossip betrays a confidence but a trustworthy man keeps a secret proverbs eleven thirteen, proverbs sixteen twenty three. proverbs actually talks a lot about this thing and it says a perverse man stirs up dissension and a gossip separates close friends so as we deal with energizing our faith, we must deal with our words. Actually, words. We must watch what we say. 100%. The right words are God's. The right words are, you know, the right words are God's words. As Job said, how possible are right words? The right words have ability to control, to influence, to persuade and overcome. Then you shall speak right words. You can always be assured of speaking the right words when you speak God's word. You are sure. That's why when you keep your conversation to the word of God, 100%. You know, and this is one of the things in the Mission Monday. By the help of God, when I go to a community, I don't know any other thing. I just talk to them about the word of God. And we are assured of speaking the right words. We've never spoken fear. We've not spoken worry. Because the word, word of God does not have fear. The word of God does not carry worry. It does not carry unbelief. It is carry faith. Hallelujah. Praise name. To praise be to the name of the Lord. Let your faith be energized this morning. As we come to the middle of the year in the calendar year 2024, receive, 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 receive enormous power in the words you speak. Life. I mean, sometimes if you, you go to your, especially for us parents, when you go to your kid has done something wrong, instead of responding by telling them, you remember what I did? You remember what you did? You remember what you did? You remember what you did? The best thing is, now use your words. They are powerful. You say you will always make the right choices. You will never make 
foolish decision. And that time you are not letting it slide. The rod is supposed to be used for correction. And the rod can be used up to a certain level. You cannot correct somebody who is 25 years old with a rod. It, it might, that will be called abuse because the person is an adult. But when they are, they are growing, you can have a way of, you know, using the rod. Because right words are very amazing. The forcible means having the ability to overcome. When you are able to apply wisdom, even when you are talking to your children, you speak the right words. Don't speak words that are not the right words. You know, I remember I shared this uh, with some people and all the women laughed. It was uh, in a community somewhere. All the women laughed because according to their culture, when a child does something wrong, they abuse the child. <laughs> They abuse the child, literally. They abuse. Anatukana mtoto. Kabisa na mtukana. Ambia wewe masikio kama sijui nini. Wewe kuja hapa. Na hii migu yako. Those kind of things. So because of the word, the word help change how they think. You know? Change how they think. And the word is very powerful. The word of God is sweet. The word of God is enormous power in your mouth. So that, you know, the words we speak, we are not like magicians. That now we'll start saying, I have dollars, I have euros, and then it's going to come automatically. There is a process. That is why you can never see a, a chick or a bird lay an egg, and then 15 minutes later, you see a bird fly. It can never happen like that. Everything has process. Even the sun comes out in a process. You don't see the sun boom at once. You just suddenly discover the sunlight. You don't even notice what time it came up. When the moon starts making its journeys, it's actually the earth we are told that is going round on its axis. But we normally see that it takes a process. Everything that God is doing in your life is taking a process. And that's why for this 150 days we are reading scripture daily, verbally, the way it is. And we thank God that now we have only three chapters to proclaim. But we look towards allowing these words to become part of our words that everything you speak you're speaking the word of god without saying let me preach a sermon your life is full of the word you know a wholesome tongue is a tree of life receive energy he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life proverbs 13 13 verse 3 the tongue of the wise is health just the words you speak you know i think for for majority of the things that God has been, when somebody is in an icy situation, the words that they used to speak are the ones that talk about the circumstances. And if somebody did not carry a good positive attitude through the words they speak, many don't make it out of ICU. But there are people whose spirit is fighting even when they are unconscious. The spirit is looking for scriptures inside your spirit. So internalize the word of God. Sp scripturize your life. Hallelujah. Scripturize your life. Praise in the name of the Lord. Energize your faith. Hallelujah. Receive strength, enormous power through the words. Speak right words. Thank God for wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning and night. We thank you as we come to the end of this broadcast and proclamation. We stand in the place of prayer to call you, Abba, to call you our Father that you may guide us and lead us. The Lord, your presence that is heaven to us will come upon us in a very supernatural way. The Lord everything begins to fall in place because you are a great God. So, Heavenly Father, we pray, help us to maintain the discipline for the one who loves discipline loves life. And we pray that, Lord, you keep us upward in the path of life and protect us from taking to the path of the grave. We pray for nations. We pray for a nation of Kenya, at this gate of time, help her to make the right judgments. Lord, forgive us for always thumping our chests and considering you when there is a crisis. 
Lord, we ask you for mercy and forgiveness. Shine your light over this nation. Shine your light. Bring victory over this nation. Declare your goodness. Oh God, we pray for the nation of Israel that, Father, you will help those young people make the right choices, Lord, not to be selfish, but to also do what their predecessors have done. Lord, this is all according to your plan. If this is your plan, Lord, let it also flow according to your purposes. Jehovah, we pray that you will guide us. Lord, we ask you to open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Lord, let it rain strength and, and, and give us capacity, renew our strength like an eagle. And Father, we thank you for every resource, Father, that you have enabled us to be able to continue doing the mission work, Father. We thank you for silver and gold belongs to you. We thank you for great provision that the Lord has been released. The Lord has released upon each one of us. We are grateful, Jehovah. We are grateful because our faith is energized. Our faith is energized, Lord. And everywhere we go, we take the great energy of the Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father, for everything you do is good. We give you praise for this word has been unfolded. And we speak the right words, O oh God. We speak the right faith, O oh God. We speak that, God, our words will be energized, O oh God. Our faith, the Lord, we will not be able to use wrong words. We pray over Kenya. We declare shalom over Kenya. We pray with many advice as a matter is established. Let there be more consultations and more governors, even talking to each other in this nation. Father, we pray for your favor. Let your favor be upon us. As we begin another week, Father, we pray that you guide us, lead us, and shine your light in every category. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. What a joy and delight to be able to go through those ones. Hallelujah. Peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? I welcome you to be a part of the kingdom. If you are not born again, it is a good thing to do. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and there are many other scriptures that I will also post on my pages and you can be able to follow. Any time that you desire to know the Lord, there is an opportunity for you. And God will always send you a preacher wherever you are. I am welcome, David, shalom, and a great start to your week. We give glory to God.